most respected elders, mothers and sisters. Allah Rabbul Azza created the creation. And from the entirety of the cre creation, He Azza wa Jal selected, honored, preferred and chose insan. In Allah astafa min al khalqi bani Adam. Wastafa min bani Adam al anbiya. And from amidst the children of Adam, Allah Rabbul Izza exalted, honored, preferred, and chose the Anbiya. And in that regards, He Azza wa Jal sent 124,000 messengers and prophets to teach, lead, and guide mankind. And from the galaxy of Anbiya, these best sons of Adam, Allah Rabbul Izza chose the Rusul. The messengers whom were given a specific revelation or a new sharia. And from amidst these chosen category of the Rusul, He Azza wa Jal selected five as the Ul al Azmi min al Rusul, as the greats amidst the messengers. And they are chronologically from the time of Nuh, Nuh alayhi salam. Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad alayhim afdalu salatu wa atammu taslim. And then from the select group of five, the like of which humankind have never seen nor will ever see again. Imagine amidst them is a person who spoke to Allah direct. Amidst them is Isa alayhi salam who would get a piece of clay, make it into a bird and breathe in it and it would fly off. He would call the dead rise and the dead would rise by the permission of Allah Rabbul Izza. These are the best sons of Adam. The princes and the greatest and the grandest amidst the messengers. Yet when he Azza wa Jal from amidst the select five chose friends, he Azza wa Jal chose Khalilain Ithnain, two friends, Ibrahim wa Muhammad. Wattakhad Allahu Ibrahim Khalila, and Allah Rabbul Izza selected Ibrahim as a Khalil, and Allah Rabbul Izza, and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a friend. And then he Azza wa Jal from these two friends elevated, honored, chosen, preferred our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the seal of prophethood. And he honored him with the maqam of Mahmud. And Allah Rabbul Izza completed the age old religion of Islam through him. As such, today I stand to speak on the best of Allah's creation and I feel insignificant, inadequate, unable how can words of a mere individual ever be able to accurately convey the characteristics of Allah's best creation and as the Arabs say فَمَهْمَا أُوْتِيَ مِنْ حُسْنِ الْبَيَانِ وَعَظَمَةِ التِّبْيَانِ وَرَوْعَةِ الْبَلَاغَةِ وَفَسَاحَةِ اللِّسَانِ How can with all the linguistic capabilities and capacities man ever be able to fathom the awesomeness of this individual? So I will with my limited vocabulary and my immense inadequacy try to convey to you as accurately as possible within my sphere to convey to you what this Rasul was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is important from my perspective that you feel a sense of proximity to your Prophet and in that regards you it is important to become intimately close to your Rasul so I want to give an incident to you the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going through the hijrah the migration from Mecca to Medina and with him is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Amr ibn Fuhayrah and it is obviously hot 
and 450 kilometers across the rugged terrain of Arabia, dry as a bone, and the Prophet وسلم, and his blessed companions are making this journey with enemies behind them, chasing them, and in this difficult situation, there they see a tent. They see a lone tent in the desert. So they are hungry and thirsty and in need of help. So they approach this tent for food or provisions or shelter. And they see at the door of this tent a lady, a strong lady. And these are women of the desert, women that face the elements. Women that are able to overcome the difficulties and adversities that life seems to throw at them. These are strong women. So she's sitting in her tent and she sees these three people approaching. And when they come near, after introductions and greetings, they ask her, Ya Umm Ma'bad, do you have anything for us to eat? And in an eloquence befitting the lady of a desert. She says, may it be sacrificed for you. If I had anything, of course I would have presented it to you. They were a hospitable breed. So the Rasul looks, it's the drought time. There's nothing in sight to eat. She has a little goat tethered at the door of the tent. It is tied. And... The Prophet says, what about that? Can I milk it? So she said, that creature, that little goat is so frail and so weak and so tired. And you know, in such a situation, it couldn't even go to graze with the rest of the sheep or with the rest of the goats. It has nothing. But try and whatever you get is yours. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to the others of this animal and he said bismillah and the others became full with milk he sallallahu alayhi wasallam milked it in a pot and gave it to her to drink she is amazed she drinks it and then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave his companions and then he drank and the pot finished so he milked again until it was full and left that pot for them and asked for the others to dry up again and then after having rested he sallallahu alayhi wasallam went on his journey the whole time could have taken from 15 to 30 minutes in the afternoon, her husband comes back, bringing the sheep and the goats from grazing. And understand these are difficult times. It is the time of a drought. They know what is available and they know what is not available. Nothing is available. There was nothing at home when he left. And when he comes back, surprise, delightfully, there's a pot of milk. So he says, Min ayna laki hatha, ya ummi ma'bad? Where did you get this from? Where did this milk come from? So she said, Innahu marra bina rajulum mubarak. A blessed man came to visit us today. In this half an hour interaction, a blessed man came here today. So Abu Ma'bad, her husband says, Sifihi li ya ummi Ma'bad. Describe him to me. And Muslims, look at the description of your Rasul. And for some, this would be the first time you hear what your Prophet looked like. And I guarantee, no Harvard graduate no Oxford graduate, no Medina graduate could ever outdo the eloquence of this Bedouin in the desert. So she decides to describe him. 
the khayr khalq Allah, Muhammad Mustafa. He says, she says, Ra'aytu rajulan zahir al wada'a. I saw a man of striking appearance. Zahir al wada'a. Ablaj al wajh. Radiant face. This is after the difficult journey in the desert. His face was radiant. Aisha radiallahu anha says, I was sewing with the needle. My needle dropped in the dark. I couldn't find it. I said, Ya Rasul, I can't find it. He moved his face close and I swear, bout of the radiance of his face, I found my needle. Ablaj al wajh. Hassan al khalq beautifully created. Lam ta'ibhu thajla, his belly wasn't protruding. It wasn't defecting him, he didn't have a gut. Walam tuzri bihi sa'ala, nor was his head disproportionate and small. Wasimun qasim, proportionate and delicate, finely made, a specimen of a creation. Fi aynayhi da'aj, in his eyes there was a contrast. The dark was immensely dark. The white was excessively white. Can you imagine the, how observant this lady is? And this is just in a few moments and in a glance at the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fi aynayhi da'aj wa fi ashfarihi watf and his eyelashes were long. The inside was dark. The outside of it immensely white. Eyelashes long, wafi sautihi sahel, and in his voice was a natural echo, wafi unukihi sata, and his neck was elegant, like not over long, but elegantly long. Wafi lihyatihi kathatha, his beard was full and thick, azaj, akran, his eyebrows were arced, but they were not joint. It was separated. In summit, فَعَلَيْهِ الْوَقَارِ When he was silent, dignity covered him. وَإِن تَكَلَّمَ سَمَاهُ وَعَلَاهُ الْبَهَا And when he spoke, it was audible and clear, almost commanding and overtaking. أَجْمَلَ النَّاسِ وَأَبْهَاهُمْ مِنْ بَعِيدِ from afar, the most striking and outstanding in appearance. وَأَحْسَنُهُمْ وَأَجْمَلُهُمْ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ And when he came near, the best of them and the most handsome of them at, in closeness. But حُلْوُ الْمَنْطِقِ so such an exalted and sweet level of logic like when he used to speak it was so coherently logical it was smooth and easy to understand he was to the point not excessive nor too short he wouldn't flirt and just talk I've got nothing to say but let's just you know just let's just talk and talk. he was Accurate, to the point, not excessive. كَأَنَّ مَنْطِقَهُ خَرَزَاتُ نَظْمٍ يَتَحَدَّرْنَ His logic, his utterances, his words were like beads, like jewels coming out of a necklace, calculated, um, worked on, prepared, polished, one after the other, it would flow magically. Rabatun, he was medium in height. Your eye didn't have to strain to look up at him, nor was it tedious to look down at him. He was a comfortable sight to look at. Ghusnun bayna ghusnayn, a branch amidst two branches as in Abu Bakr and Amr ibn Fuhayra. And you must be in the desert to understand this little metaphor. Ghusnun bayna ghusnayn. I went to the desert, to Arabia, and I traveled for 140 kilometers out of Medina. And God, like barren land, just the same color rocks and it just goes and goes and goes colorless you know just dry and I am telling my driver hold on I need to take pictures so the, the driver you know he was fascinated what does this guy want to do with these pictures 
And I wanted to bring it for my students so that when I'm discussing Sira, I can explain this is, this is the, the terrain. And then the driver pulled, you know, slow down and he goes, there, 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 there's a tree, take a picture. <laughs> and I said, I said, no, I want to take the picture of the rocks. He goes, you're a strange people. I said, why? He goes, we take pictures of trees. You guys take pictures of the mountains. I said, where we come from, there's a lot of trees. There's no mountains. Do you see? It is such a refreshing sight in Arabia, like out in the desert, when you see a tree. Wallah, it makes you happy just at sight. So she says, Ghusnun bayna ghusnain, a branch amidst two branches. Refreshing is just his glance. فَهُوَ أَنظَرُ الثَّلَاثَةِ مَنظَرًا He is the best of the three to behold. وَأَحْسَنُهُمْ قَدْرًا And their best in proportion. لَهُ رُفَقَاء يَحُفُّونَ بِهِ They had friends, the people that were with him. They were working around him to try to serve and protect him. إِنْ قَالَ سَمِعُوا لِقَوْلِهِ When he used to say something, they used to hearken to what he used to say. وَإِنْ أَمَرَ تَبَادَرُوا إِلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ When he commanded, they used to compete to fulfill the command. And this is, the, this, and the, the husband says, the husband says, Wallahi, this is the one the Quraysh are seeking. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. And if Allah give me a chance to see him, I will go and pledge allegiance to him. Anas ibn Malik says, he says, I came out one night, uh, in, I came out one night, it was the full moon night. And I looked at the moon and in the desert understand the moon is, is an awesome sight. It is smooth, it is radiant, it is clear, it is gentle compared to the scorching sun at which they are used to. So the moon was the epitome of beauty. So he says, I came out at a full moon night and I looked at the, at the moon and I saw it, beautiful, handsome. So I said, let me go see if the moon is more handsome or my prophet is more handsome. Let me see if that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful. So I went and I saw him standing afar. So I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and he said, Wallahi, he was more handsome than the moon in its entirety. That, that is just the look of your Rasul. And I understand and, and I get tired of the nonsense. Don't describe the Prophet, concentrate on his message. You don't describe him, I will. The great scholars spent time describing the Rasul. How can you create proximity, love and appreciation until, unless you know? And how can you know unless you know? Unless you become acquainted intimately with the Rasul. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was mind-bogglingly handsome. But his handsomeness was covered with waqar in Jalal in Haybah. The Sahaba say, when we used to sit at, hi, at his feet, the Ahl al-Ilm say, two feelings conflicting would come on the heart. The first one, you wanted to look at him. You wanted to behold the majesty of his face. And when you wanted to look up, shyness used to overtake you, so you used to look down. At the same instance, two conflict. Amr ibn al-As says, I sat with him many times, but if you ask me to describe his face, I can't describe it. I wouldn't be able to look up to him ijlalan wa ta'zeeman. I couldn't look up at him. And that is why he didn't have the problems that Yusuf alayhi salam had. Because it was difficult to penetrate the awe and the splendor of the Rasul. And whilst he was that, you know, handsome, handsome man, the Prophet ﷺ was not flirty. 
He was not the toying type. He wasn't easy. Muslims, learn from your prophet. Be grand. Have an awe and an aura around you. This spontaneous flirtation is not in our culture. It is not in our deen. Be respectful. You're male and you're female. Your Prophet alayhi afdalu salatu wa atamu taslim was a great man. No, he was the greatest of men. A man with a huge vision. Listen to the story. This is in the early years of Islam. And visions are the seeds of reality. Visions are important. Have great big dreams and chase them in life. Dreams of khair. The Prophet in the early years of the da'wah, they have, he was in sajda, in the haram. They came and took the intestines of a camel and placed it on top of the blessed back of the Rasul. Imagine the feeling of embarrassment. Imagine the feeling of having filth on top of you. You just get called names and you change your name. You're just shown a little bit of difficulty and you lock yourselves inside your houses. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of Allah's creation, was physically abused. Dirt was poured on his blessed back. And he is in sajda and he didn't lift his, himself up from the sajda. He stayed. Someone went and told Fatima to Zahra, they have just poured dirt on the back of your father. She came crying, young girl at that stage. And she's cleaning the dirt and cursing them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, don't worry, Ya Fatima. Don't worry, my little daughter. What your father has brought will go to every house on the planet. Do you see the vision? At what time? Where he can't protect himself. But what am I working for? That this deen enter every house on the face of this earth. The battle of Ahzab came. 10,000 plus have come at the doors of Medina with the single aim to annihilate Islam. The Muslims at this stage, fully grown adult fighting men, 1,400. If you took the youth and the youngsters, 3,000. 1,400 or 3,000 against 10,000 plus was suicide. And the Quran describes it, وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرُ Remember when your eyes grew wide in panic and the heart started to thump at the throats. Remember the days of fear. At that instance where everyone is afraid and the hypocrites come, إِنَّ بُيُوتَنَا عَوْرَةِ Our houses are unprotected. Give us permission to leave the battlefield. At that instance, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that big rock comes in the middle of the trench. So the Rasul comes, yeah, they call him, Ya Rasulullah, help us out. The Prophet struck the rock and a shudder, a spark went through the entire city of Medina. So he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, the palaces of Rome. Ya, ya Subhanallah, Ya Rasulullah, you're here on the verge of annihilation. They are standing over the trench, 10,000 plus, and you're talking about the palaces of Persia, and the cities of Rome, and the cities of Yemen. Do you see, your Rasul at the most difficult hours was pulled up and pulled the nation up through this awesome vision. I want to ask, what is your vision, young Muslim, old Muslim, male Muslim, female Muslim? What do you live for? Do you have a vision? Harvard University, as part of their MBA, spends hours doing what they call visioning exercise. Let's figure out what you want to do. Do you even have a vision, Muslim? have a vision and the vision of the prophet was contagious umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu anhu wa ardah in the days of jahiliyyah amr ibn al-as came to him ya umar what is your dream in life what do you want to achieve 
He said, I want to have a herd of camels that I can tend to, that I can milk, that I can, you know, take offsprings from and live nice and comfortable. It was a very localized, small dream, a lot like our dreams today. If I could pay off that house, get that job, buy that car, small dreams. And then Omar came in contact with the Rasul. And Omar became a Muslim. And Omar became Farooq al, Farooq al Ummah. And Omar became Amir al Mu'mineen. Ah, and Amr ibn al As came to him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. I asked you in the Jahiliyyah, what was your aim? What was your mission? What was your vision? What do you aspire towards? And you told me you wanted some camels. I'm asking you today, what do you want, Ya Omar? So he says, I want to strive that the deen of Muhammad reach every corner of the globe. Do you see? It is that vision that made them work night and day. Visionless, directionless, aimless. You walk around like a kid with a soccer ball and without a goal. Just going in circles. And Allah and his prophet gave you your visions and we brought you people all the way from Sydney to talk to you about visions. May Allah bless them, Ya Rabbi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was brave. Brave in, in following his vision and brave in nature. And the day of Hunayn came. And Hunayn was a difficult day. The Muslims are coming from Mecca. The tribe of Ghatafan, the Bedouin tribe, has amassed a huge army. We will go and annihilate Muhammad, that is it. And they are so determined that they even brought their women and children with them. That one sweeping attack and let's finish them. And the Prophet ﷺ is riding into the valley. And Hunayn is camped up on the hills, on the mountains. And just as the sun is coming from behind the mountain. And the Prophet and the Ashab have reached the slow point. Hunayn, the tribe of Ghatafan unleashed. And the warriors came down. And such an overwhelming attack that the Muslims who were at the front lost heart and they started to turn back and they started to flee backwards. In that confusion, a stampede happened and they're pushing the Muslims back like that. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I have seen stampedes where men become heedless and unaware and they're just running without any idea. It is a difficult time. It is a time of fear. So everyone is afraid. And what does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? The Ashab say he stood on his stirrups and he said, أنا نبي الله لا كذب أنا ابن عبد المطلب I am the prophet of Allah it isn't a lie I am the grandchild of Abdul Muttalib Ya Abbas call out to the people of the surah of Baqarah Ya Abbas call out to those that pledged under the tree of Hudaybiyah and then from this defeat through the courage and bravery of the Rasul, Allah Rabbul Izzat turned a lost campaign into a victory. The Rasul was brave. There was a big bang in Medina. A rock or a meteorite had hit from the sky. And it was in the middle of the night. And those people were not like us. They didn't hear explosions regularly. You watch Hollywood, anytime something goes, you know, you think, you, you know, an explosion, you're used to it. You've seen it somewhere, you've heard about it. It is either fireworks or something else. But for them, explosions and big bangs were not heard of, so it was very scary. And the Ashab say, in that fear, we woke up and everyone's looking around. And then we saw him, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamuhu alayhi. On a horse, bareback, not with the saddle. He's just jumped on it. His sword hanging off his neck. And he goes, I checked it out. It's okay. It's okay. I've checked it out. It's okay. The Rasul was brave. 
But whilst he was brave, he wasn't arrogant. Bravery means to overcome your fears. It doesn't mean to be cocky and arrogant. Youth understand the difference. The Rasul was humble. He conquered Mecca. 10,000 men have come into the city which tortured him and hurt him and kicked him out and killed his companions and imprisoned him. He is walking as a con he comes in victorious. But how did he ride into the city? The Ashab say he lowered himself and humbled himself so much that his beard was hitting the back of his camel to show that I haven't come in arrogance, Ya Rabb. Learn humility from your Rasul. Learn modesty from your Rasul. You see, today, and I don't want to talk in a negative, it doesn't suit me, but you see a youngster today just reach maturity and his walk changes. I saw one, his chest was stuck out so much, I told him, sweetheart, have you had an operation? He said, no, sir. I said, has someone hurt you? He goes, why? I said, who walks like that? <laughs> but we forget the balance. Learn from your prophet. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. The Rasul was good to his family. The prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of you are those who are best to his wives and his family, and I am the best of you. He was the Rasul of Allah. And look at his relationship with his wives and with his family. He used to play with them, entertain them, laugh with them, joke with them, eat with them. He did it when he came into the house, it wasn't like a dark cloud came into the house. Aisha radiallahu anha says, Lana shamsun walil afaqi shams. I have a sun, as in the radiant sun, and the skies have a sun. You know, when the sun comes out, it is happy moments. You say you're like the ray of sunshine. The Rasul was sunshine to his household. What will your wife say about you? Do you understand? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu anha says, When I was younger and more agile and more fit, the Prophet raced me or chased me and I ran and overtook him. I beat him. So years passed. Radiallahu an Aisha. Years passed. Aisha radiallahu anha put on weight. She became bigger. And the Prophet is in, a, is in a campaign. He's traveling with the Ashab. And then in the middle of the desert, learn, learn love from your Rasul. In the middle of the desert, he tells the army, go ahead. Go ahead. Me and my wife will stay back a little. So when they're gone and out of sight, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looks at her and says, You want a race? Ah, uh, salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayka ya Rasulullah. So can you imagine our mother Aisha getting ready to race? So they stood and they ran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beat her, over, won the race. So he said, this one for that one. And the sweetness of joking. It wasn't rude and vulgar and obscene and over the top and difficult. This one for that one. And learn to be delicate. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha says. I used to watch him from the corner of my eyes when we used to eat. So I used to take a piece of meat or a morsel of meat and bite it and put it back in the plate. 
he used to pick up that morsel, turn it to where my mouth had touched it, and bite from the same place and look at me and I would blush. Your prophet was good to his family. Be good to your families. They dealt with each other out of love and respect. You read the books of the Salaf. They rarely called each other by name. It was always a kunya, Ya Aba Sulaiman. Learn decency and niceness from the Rasul. The Prophet ﷺ spoiled them. She want, there was a group of Abyssinians doing sword play in the courtyard of the masjid. She wanted to watch Aisha. So she said, can I watch? So the Prophet stood in front of her to let her watch from over his shoulder so that she's covered behind him. So she's watching from here. And she watched and she's enjoying it and she's young and the Rasul is older. Life is much more serious from where he stands. So he stood and stood and stood and then he said, is it enough ya Aisha? And she says, I wanted to see how much he loves me. So I said, no, stay. So he, she said, I watched him change legs. You know, like a person gets tired and they swap legs like that. I watched him like that. And she says, I asked him, what is your love for me like? So he said, like a knot. Tight. So he used to, uh, she used to ask, you know, as the days used to go by, how is the knot? <laughs> so he used to say, ala haliha, as it was. As it was. Learn to live from your prophet Muslims. Learn to, be sunshines in your houses. It is so sad to see in 2014 where man has landed on the moon, people are still arguing over little things. Why didn't you cook this meal? I'm not talking to you. And months go by, I'm not talking to you. Learn to live Muslims. The Prophet wasallam never lied. We were talking all yesterday about honesty and ethics and, you know, being righteous in business. The Rasul never lied. He never deceived. He never even remotely deceived. Listen to this. The Prophet wasallam. there was a criminal, a fugitive from Islamic law. He had ran away from Medina and gone and take, taken refuge in Mecca. And... The capital punishment had been proclaimed over him, like that was his punishment by law. And now he's ran away into Mecca. So Islam took over Mecca. And the Prophet ﷺ gave these instructions. If you see him hanging from the ropes of the Kaaba, kill him. He has hurt Muslims and hurt Islam and betrayed Allah and his prophet if you see him hanging and seeking protection from the ropes of the Kaaba kill him and then he is in Mecca he is sit seated the Ashaba around him what a gathering the Rasul and the companions and then he looks up and Uthman ibn Affan has brought this fugitive to the prophet not to punish and Uthman is the son-in-law of the Rasul. Uthman is the one of whom the angels were shy. So now he's come in front of the Rasul and he says, Bayahu ya Rasulullah. O Prophet of Allah, accept his allegiance, accept his repentance, take the oath of allegiance from him, shake his hand. And the Prophet looked up and he turned his face away. And Uthman said, Bayahu ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, accept his bay'ah. I have brought him. Take his bay'ah. Take the oath of allegiance. Accept Islam from him. The Prophet turned his face away again. Third time, Uthman says, Bayahu ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, accept his allegiance. Shake his hand. And the Prophet turned his face away again. Fourth time, Uthman insisted, 
So the Rasul extended his blessed hands, shook the man's hand, accepted his allegiance, and the man left. And when he left, they say the face of the Prophet became angry. And he looked at them and said, Ama minkum rajulur rashid. Isn't there amidst you a righteous soul? So they said, why your prophet? He goes, you saw me refuse him three times. Why didn't one of you strike him? So the ashab said, oh messenger of Allah, anyone that comes in repentance you accept. Had you chosen not to accept, why didn't you give us a hint with your eye? Why didn't you wink? Why didn't you say? <laughs> so the Rasul said, وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ خَائِنَةُ الْأَعْيُنِ It doesn't befit the majesty of a prophet to deceive with his eyes. Do you see the standards that the Rasul has set? Even with your eyes don't wink deception. Learn Muslim. Learn to live as your prophet lived. You will shine like the burning star. The Rasul was gracious. Today, even today, I saw the brothers showed me one of the messages a poor Muslim has written with regards to this morning's presentation. Ah, oh, sweetheart. What happened to grace? What happened to Rujula? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want to learn to live Muslim. There was... One of the arch enemies of Islam, Thumama ibn Asil, he was one of the chiefs of one of the tribes, and he had caused Islam a lot of harm. So, as it happened, he fell in the hands of the Muslim army, and they brought him to Medina tied up. And when they brought him into the city, and this is part of the awesomeness of the faith. There was no prisons in Medina. So they didn't know what to do with him, so they tied him in one of the pillars of the masjid. So mama. So he's tied. And he is one of the big enemies of the Prophet in Islam. And the house of the Prophet opens into the masjid, the door of the house of Aisha. So they told him, Ya Rasul, we've got him and he's tied in the masjid. So he came in and look at the adab of the Rasul. Learn grace. He looks at him and says, what would you say Muslims? What happened? Where's that long tongue? You want to say something now? So he says, Bi adabin jam." ماذا عندك يا ثمامة How are things with you, O ثمامة It is sufficient a hint to understand. At the same time, it never traverses the lines of politeness. How are things? So this proud and perhaps at this stage arrogant man says, عندي الخير it is all good. And then thinking the Prophet might do something, he gives a warning. Ya Muhammad, in taqtul taqtul dha damin, wa in tun'im tun'im ala shakir, wa in turidil mal fasal ta'ta ma shi'at. O Muhammad, if you take my life, understand my blood is expensive. My tribe will come to avenge. Don't think this will be washed off like that. My blood is valuable. وَإِن تُنْعِمْ تُنْعِمْ عَلَى شَاكِرْ And if you decide to be gracious, to be bountiful, you will be bountiful to a person who knows how to be grateful. وَإِن تُرِدِ الْمَالِ And if you want wealth, فَسَلْ تُعْتَى مَا شِئْتْ Ask, it will be granted. So the Prophet turned and went to pray. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed. Next day he came again. 
he saw Thumama again and he asks again Mada عندك يا Thumama how are things so he says عندي يا الخير all good in taqtul taqtul dha damin wa in tun'im tun'im ala shakir wa in turid al mal fasal tu'ta ma shi't if you take my life if you shed my blood my blood is expensive my blood is valuable people will come vengeance will be taken if you are bountiful i will be grateful if you want wealth ask it will be granted so the prophet turned and went to pray third day he came again ماذا عندك يا ثمام how are things the man answers the exact same way so the prophet smiled he said release him I don't want your blood I don't want you indebted to me and I don't want your wealth go you're free so ثمام left the masjid and he went can you imagine what it does to a heart this person that you have hated and resented and fought a million times in your head and you expect a punch you expect a stab you expect a jab you expect punishment you expect ridicule yet he honors you go so Sumama went out of the masjid and into the nearest orchard he saw water he said can I wash myself they said go for it he poured it on himself and washed himself and came wet and dripping into the masjid and he said Ya Muhammad your land was the most hated land to me Allah has made it the most beloved land to me your religion was the most hated religion to me Allah has made it the most beloved of religions to me you were the most hated person to me. Allah has made you the most beloved person to me. Ashhadu annaka la Rasulullah. I swear you're the messenger of Allah. Learn grace from your Prophet Muslims. The Prophet was gracious. He won the world with his kindness. He won the world with his love. He won the world with a heart like an ocean. He didn't win the world by the stupidity that you see around you today. It is not an achievement. It is not an achievement. Learn from the Prophet ﷺ. The Rasul was generous. They say he used to give without fear of poverty. And once times were very difficult, they were very poor. Someone gave him a new garb to wear, a new clothes to wear. So the Prophet went inside and put it on. And subhanallah, he looked dazzling, the Rasul with new clothes. The Ashab looked at him. It was like Eid, the Prophet has dressed new. So they said, you look good, Ya Rasul. You look good, O Prophet of Allah. In the middle of all this, a person stands up, give it to me, O Prophet of Allah. So he stayed silent. And then he went back inside. And he put on his old clothes and brought this one folded to the man. He said, here. So the Ashab became upset with him. Why did you force the Prophet to give you what he liked? So he said, stop rebuking me. I only took it because the Prophet loved it so that I could be shrouded and buried in it. You see, he was generous. Once there was a valley full of livestock, he was standing over it watching all the you know, wealth that has fallen to Muslims. With him was a new river to a person on the brink of Islam. So the Prophet said, do you like what you see? He said, yes. He goes, go, it is all yours. So the man said, he goes, I have seen king's gift and I have seen prince's gift and I have seen chief's gift. This is the gift of none but the prophet. Only prophets have hearts like this. Learn to be generous Muslims. My time has come to its end and I have gone over it a little. Um, I want to make a few du'as inshallah ta'ala. 
May Allah Rabbul Azza accept this effort from us and from you, inshallah. Ya Rabb, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'un alim. Wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawabu rahim May Allah honor you and preserve you and protect you and bless you, you and your families and all those that are related to you and all those that you know and do not know and all the righteous of this earth, Ya Rabb. And may Allah Rabbul Izza make this a cause of khair and put it in the mizan of our hasanat in yours. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah that you live to have two days from its morning till its evening in the obedience of Allah Rabbul Izza. Alhamdulillah, you came and sat in a gathering in which Allah's name is mentioned. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, مَا مِنْ قَوْمٍ اجتمعوا يذكرون الله عز وجل لا يريدون بذلك إلا وجهه إلا ناداهم مناد من السماء أن قوموا مغفورا لكم قد بدلت سيئاتكم حسنات Never do a group of people gather together to remember their Lord and to rehearse their, his signs and to talk about his religion except that at the end of the gathering a caller from the heavens calls rise you have been forgiven all your sins have been turned into hasanat glad tidings to you congratulations to you you who left your houses and your comforts to come here and accept our invitation may Allah Rabbul Izzah invite you to a better abode than this and us along with you and my special thanks and my special gratitude to our honored mashayikh and the Ahlul Ilm and Ahlul Fadl who came here and honored and graced this gathering with their presence and with their ilm. And to all my brothers and sisters, I am not in the habit of lifting one over the other. There's a lot of dignitaries here, yet you're all dignitaries at the same time. May Allah protect you, guide you.